Howdy, lieutenants and economists. The most volatile, evil, disgusting things on the planet, humans. If you have a video request, you can always go to assholeconsulting.com. Yeah, I am gonna charge you, kids. And that is the importance of not fucking up. You are such an asshole! Assholeconsulting.com. Go there if you got a question, boys and girls. And just so you know, the email contact form has been updated. I think we solved their email problem, so you could send your emails to assholeconsulting.com like you used to through the contact form. And always check your spam or junk folder to make sure that my response did not end up there. I think we got it licked, but <clears throat> we now we're in the test phase. And the reason we have to do the reason we spent. Goddamn well near 10 hours of that and a couple hundred dollars of my money is because other people fucked up. Hey, Captain, I've gone through your books, enjoy the decline, poor Richard's retirement, and curse of the high IQ. If you believe online Q tests are, my IQ is between 125 and 130. They're, they're, they're legit, as long as you take the right ones. I mean, they're not going to perfectly correlate with a, a WAS test, but, uh, you, they, you know, you, you take it, there'll be a correlation. Enjoy the decline has become my mantra for 2019, but I keep hitting a hurdle. The hurdle is also my question for today. Why won't people listen when you have facts on your side? <clears throat> I know you say all the time people just want to be lied to. Is there anything else driving this deliberate ignorance? Case in point, I was, I was asked my opinion on a topic. I gave a fact-based opinion. There's no such thing as fact-based opinions. There's facts and there's opinions. Facts are not opinions. Your opinion might be factual. It might be, but if you're giving a fact, you have left the realm of opinion. If you give an opinion and you're not sure, because that's what an opinion is, you just think you don't know, well, that's not, it, it may accidentally be factual, um, but you don't know that for sure. That means you're ignorant. And that's why I say, fuck your, I just feel. Feeling is worse than I just think, which is worse than I don't. I know is the best statement to lead with. I know that is a fact. I have researched it up. This is the truth. And unless that information was flawed or given to me erroneously, I know that is a fact. Then you have what Democrats and predominantly, well, let's just say Democrats, I think. Well, fuck what you think. Knowing is more superior. And you have no excuse today because we have the internet. Where Democrat women come in is, I feel, oh, well, hang on. I feel you should suck my fucking dick. Fuck you and your feelings. Especially when we're talking trillions of dollars of my tax money. And the future of the country. Fuck your feelings, ladies. <clears throat> she questioned my, she questioned, she questioned my sources. I brought all other sources. She then called me names. Of course. Yeah, at which point you should just let her be and learn to enjoy the show and, and look at her as an individual, see where she was going. Um, to which I said, you calling me names doesn't prove me wrong. I'll try again. Good, good. She went on to say, well, I feel or my feeling is. I find Blooper said, when you upgrade from feeling to knowing, let me know. So as far as I'm right, so far I'm still right and you haven't tried proving me wrong. Outstanding. Did you cry? That was the end of the talk because I became the mean bully with the superiority complex. You are, no, it's not a complex, you are superior. You're dealing with knowledge. I've had dozens of these conversations with people. I bring facts and they bring feelings and I get ostracized. Yes. Well, until they need a loan or help with something, both of which I've stopped providing. Good. Stop being a cuck, man. Fuck these people. But it would help me enjoy the decline if I could just understand why most people hate to hear facts or learn anything. Lately, I've found more joy in my books than when within other people's company. Yes, most people are inferior. That's why when you find a good human, they're the most valuable fucking thing on the planet. Just finished Atlas Shrugged, and now I'm rereading The Art of War. Oh, you read through all of Atlas Shrugged? Just help me figure this one out before I pull my hair out. I prefer a video response. Uh, thanks, and we'll keep you in us. All right, look. <clears throat> Whether you understand why people prefer lies and feelings over truth and reality, which we'll delve into, for your own sake, stop beating yourself up over it, okay? Your life is too short to get pissed off that people are dumb, people are willingly ignorant, people are weak-minded, and they want to be told lies instead of told the truth, all right? But just accept that, okay? Don't try and change it. Uh, if you get to my stage with Operation Evil, you're going to learn to capitalize on it. Um, and I think that is really the future for true philosophers or Stoics who get to that level where it's like, 
you try to save society, they not only ignore you, but they call you an ist or an ism or stupid or ignorant superiority complex, whatever the fuck that means. And then you realize not only are they stupid, ignorant, but they actually are the enemy and they're a, maybe an unconscious evil. Um, they're not maliciously evil, but there's a con there's an element. You have no respect for them. You don't like them. And then you view them as what they really truly are, and that is cattle. They're to be taken advantage of. All right? So if you could get to that point, it would be mentally healthier for you to, because that's what you're accurately assessing. Me on. I don't stand out in the cow field trying to convince cows about the merits of Austrian economics. I'm just like, future meat, maybe milk. I don't drink milk, but ice cream. That's why I look at the cattle. What you want cut? Here you go. Moo. Democrats, leftists, are just ignorant people in general. What, ladies? You would deserve it all. Here's your cud. Moo. Just keep on going. Pay your taxes. Going to debt. Whatever. Here's my book. Buy it. I mean, look at a guy called Derek Jackson, J-A-X-N. Look at the books he writes. There's a man who figured it out. There's a, and he catches, he catches so much flack from guys in the red pill. I'm like, guys, he's on our team. He's, he's, he's deeply penetrated enemy territory. He's on our side. <laughs> he's a special agent. So try to get to that level. But the reason why people want to believe in lies, and it, and it can be anything. It could be big is beautiful. It could be that beauty is on the inside. It could be that socialism works. It could be the world just needs more love. It could be that. Uh, it could be follow your heart and the money will follow. Whatever. The reason why is not only are those lies sweeter tasting, <clears throat> but the real reason, and it always goes back to this, and you could probably guess it already, ladies, and maybe not. It's a harder one to connect it. Not loser. It's worse than loser. Lazy. They're lazy. And here <clears throat> is why most of the sheep, most of the normies, conformies, and inferiors not only subscribe to lies, but I not only are emotionally responsive in an agitated way, in an angry way, or a crying way, when you point out the truth, but then they start attacking you. It's because they're lazy. Because when you present the truth, whatever it is, the truth compared to lies, is not as sweet tasting, not as fun, but above all else, always, always, <clears throat> this is an axiom, I guess, what it was, a rule that is always true, an axiom, it always requires more work. And when you tell someone the truth, it usually isn't about a small little thing, it's about a big thing, a lifelong thing, which means when you amortize it or spread it out, if, if you're going to believe this truth, you're going to listen to the truth, that means your entire life outlook has to change and therefore your behavior has to change. And since it's spread over the course of life and truth takes more energy and effort than lies, it means that they're going to have to work more. Perfect example. Big is beautiful. Big is beautiful is a lie. Fat people, not just women, fat people are revolting, they're disgusting, they're gross. Um, I just got back from Door County. I don't want to ever see a fat white woman again. I'm going to. I don't have a choice. It's the future. <clears throat> but it, I'm surprised the peninsula just didn't sink with all the fat white broads out there. Uh, if you go to a fat person at all, anyway, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> and you say, you're fat and gross and disgusting. You are a, ne a visual negative externality. You're like an ugly piece of art. You are physically revolting at a minor level to people. And you really need to lose the weight. What you're really doing is you're telling them <clears throat> that they have to work out for the rest of their life. That the future life is going to be in part a part-time job. You could even say enslaved to making yourself look physically attractive. Right? Now... I admit that reality, you admit that reality, some other people admit that reality. This is why a lot of guys in the Red Belt, we go work out, we, we diet, we exercise. Maybe not the best that we possibly could, but we, I, I, you're never going to see Rich Cooper become morbidly obese. You're never going to see it. You're never going to see uh, <clears throat> Rolo. I'm, I'm just, just randomly list off the people. Um, uh, 
I mean, who, who, who's out there? I'm trying to come in a blink. Vince, TJ Martinell, all these guys. Are we all Adonis Herculean gods? No, but we can all run three miles. You know, we can all get up a thousand feet, unless it's starting at 14,000 feet, in which case I will get a massive amount of altitude sickness and a painful headache. Um, but when you go to a fat person and you say, you're overweight, you're disgusting, you're, you're, you're not attracting anyone, um, it's bad for your health, whatever other truths you may want to say, what you're really saying is you need to commit a, a significant portion of your free life into the future in the gym doing something you don't want. And that's what they really don't want to hear. That's what they, they don't want to hear. And deep down inside, they know it. And there's conflict, and that's where the emotion comes from. Is there's this conflict within themselves. They know it. Now, take, for example, not to pick on him, <clears throat> uh, but my buddy, Chris Beckloff. Beckloff will be the first to admit he needs to lose weight. But Beckloff is also, he makes a choice. He's not chasing after tail. He's not, like, not going to go after eights, nines, and tens. He knows. He's, he's just going gonna, gonna to settle for the pretty in the face wife, if he finds one even. You know? he, he's like, no, it's not worth it to me. To go and work out and diet and exercise. Ask him about the fun time he had coming up, uh, hiking with me up Death Mountain. Ask him about his Death Mountain experience. <laughs> he made it. He made it. <clears throat> but he's made a conscious decision. It's not worth it to him. But with Chris, he doesn't live in lies. He's not like the fat, purple, hate shaved, haired feminist that says, Big is beautiful! Oh, and you better like me, and then yells at you or calls you an ist or an ism or ignorant having a superiority complex uh, because you, you've you pointed out the truth and they know the truth and they'd like to still be you know pretty thin or whatever. Kristen never did it. Yep, I'm kind of fat and I need to lose weight. But, you know, I like my Pepsi and um, I just really, really, really hate working out. And my life would be worse. So he, but he accepts that reality. He still lives in truth. And he's willing to pay the sacrifice, which is a lesser dating life, sex life, marriage life. Uh, but he's okay with that. He accepts that reality. <clears throat> Your lie to yourself people don't. Uh, predominantly leftists. I don't want to make it purely about politics because it's not. Uh, but, but one of the biggest lies is where should the country go is, here's another one. Uh, this kid called Jacob Shire. He just wrote an article about why he, he doesn't want to get a PhD. He just wants basic guaranteed income. Uh, the, the biggest lie on an economic or political level is that people don't want to work for a living. I don't want to work for a living. They want to believe the lie that, and this is what the left is spectacularly amazing with, is they come up with the explanations and the rationales as to why you don't have to work. You're fill in the blank. You're disabled. You have a hood to hood to hood or some mental disability. You're this color skin. You're that color skin. You're this gender. You're that made up gender. You're make up another one. Oh, you're transsexual. You're transgender. I just don't know the thing. Um, you're heightest. You're shortest. You're ageist. You're ableists. Uh, and, and the rest of the world is oppressing you consciously and every day. And after this, I got to go to the to the women's oppression group. And the, the black guy oppression, well, the black oppression group in general. And, uh, and then we, we conspire on how to oppress different groups. Because I am a white male. I'm frustrated. And then, we, then I got the how to oppress the gays meetup group. But then I know with the gays. And then we have the how to oppress the transsexual meetup group. Uh, it's bullshit. Uh, what it boils down to is people make dumb choices, regardless of your skin color, race, career, whatever. But then they look, it's not because I had five kids out of wedlock. Oh, it's because I'm a, a, a color of this type of skin today and my gender is that. Oh, I, I can't find the monies because of the patriarchy. It's like, no, you majored in stupid shit. You took on a ton of debt. You don't show up for work on time and you take way more time off the men. That's why you have a wage gap. In whatever case, it's you got to work more. And not just today or tomorrow, but for the rest of your life. For the next 60 years. Smart, why do I have to work so long and hard? Oh my gosh, no. You are an ist or ism for including or insisting that I work hard. And so that's where the emotion comes from. People have a genetic ingrained response to not work. Laziness was a survival strategy. As you can keep in mind, up until about 200 years ago, 300 years ago, 
The number one problem was getting enough food. That's all we did was we got to get food. We got to get food. We got to get, it was resources. That, that is not going to go away even though we've mastered agriculture and now we have obesity as a problem. It is hardwired just as much as sex to loaf around and do nothing until you know for certainty chasing after that antelope is going to net you more calories of meat than what it expends to go chase that antelope. And so from a very ingrained to the core uh, survivalistic instinct, most people are lazy. And when presented with this fact, this truth that, no, you're going to have to work, otherwise society collapses. <clears throat> no, you're not going to major in stupid shit. You're going to have to major in something hard. No, you're not going to become a social reserve assistant, diversity, inclusion, break glass in case of emergency, assistant reserve, chancellor, vice, post provost, diversity, inclusion officer at the university. You're going to become a welder or a plumber. Uh, and no, you're not beautiful inside or outside. You're actually a fat, loud bitch that no one wants to do with either emotionally, psychologically, or definitely not physically. Lose the fucking weight, grow your hair out. Patriarch, and, it's your, and then the emotions come through. Right? That's why people are lazy. And I, you could say lazy. I like to call it what it really is because it highlights the true inferiority of these people. They are cowards. They are deathly afraid of work. They are deathly afraid of toil. Which, I mean, Nobody likes work or time. I'm like, yay, toil. Hey, I get to write my book today. How fun. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to it, but I get it done because then I get the money and then there's accomplishment. These people never even enter the realm of accomplishment. These are the type of people that they'll put award-winning book or author on their time. You look in the book, had like five sales. These are the type of people who give each other awards of awards that mean nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's the fucking diddly do diddly dot award. Oh, I, I got an award. And then you find out, oh, the, the only people to win the diddly do diddly dot award is everyone who sits on the diddly do diddly dot award board. And they just award the next person the next year. <clears throat> they stay in academia. They never enter the real world because they are cowards. They are weaklings. They are deathly afraid of putting in the toil and effort that would otherwise give their lives meaning and purpose and value. I mean, it, that's, that's what it is. And so when you present fact and truth about things like politics or health, uh, not religion because religion is a completely different one, but ideology, history, even comic, uh, common sense and logic, you know, uh, what you're doing is you're, you're taking a mirror and showing it on these people and saying, look, life is going to fuck you up if you don't make some changes. You're telling them you need to make some lifelong changes, some lifestyle changes that requires you to put forth a lifetime of work and effort. And people don't want to believe that. They desperately don't want to believe that because they're lazy. They want to major in creative writing. They want to major in women's studies. They want to major in whatever. They just don't want to work. And for every one of you assholes out there, like me at Asshole Consulting, for everyone who writes a, you know, a truthful book, there are not only thousands of other people that'll tell them the lies, uh, but much better financed and much better marketed groups of people out there. Uh, much better entrenched. I mean, every major institution in the United States, from government to education to the media to corporate America, is perfectly geared towards telling people whatever the fuck they want to hear as long as they get their money or in the case of the Democrat Party, votes. And then the consequences are you're living a lie. And if you live a lie, you don't have success because you're not living in the real world. There's no better example than the black community who keeps voting Democrat. Go to Baltimore, go to Southside Chicago, go, go to any black community where they were given the lies by the Democrat Party and look at the standards of living of, of your fellow black man or black woman there. It, and, and it just shows you how, how valuable people prefer to have lies and feel good about themselves than be told the truth. I mean, you're another one again, origins of enjoy the show. Look at women today. Are women getting more and more financial success? Yes. Are more and more women entering STEM? Absolutely. 
which is a good thing. I'm, I'm all for it. Are women uh, closing the wage gap? Yes, they are. Are women paying more in taxes? Yes, they are. Are they commuting more? Yes, they are. <laughs> are they waiting until they're 327 years old to have children? Yes, they are. But are they happy? <laughs> they wanted to... This is a whole new, different, made-up lie that was telling women that they were men. Uh, and that you could do whatever men and you were oppressed. You gotta go! Get the patriarch and go! go. I, I, libertarian, here, here's some weapons. Let me sell you some weapons. Go get the patriarchy. And then all of a sudden, they're 37. Hey, God, you wanted to have a kid. And then they're all masturbating when an article comes out about a 52-year-old woman that managed to not have a Down syndrome child. You know, and they're like, ah, see, see. It's like, well, why don't you just have kids? You're just trying to keep us down. It's like, okay, okay, I, 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 all right, fine, fine, just go. <laughs> and you got to get to that. And this is why I want you to draw from this to me. The dear client, any other people out there. You gotta not let their ignorance piss you off. You gotta not let their desperate desire to believe in lies anger you or annoy you. You gotta step back, look at them, look at where they're going, and forget what they say, forget what they demand, forget how they feel or think. You know where they're going. You know what's gonna happen. All you got to do is uh, make your statement, make your peace, well, no, you're wrong. And I, when I argue, it's not even arguing. I'm like, well, no, you're, you're not really right. It's wrong. Well, who do you want? <laughs> well, look, here's, here's the world's information right here. Da, 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 and I say, you're wrong. Well, I just feel, well, you're wrong. And, and, and I don't know what else to say. I mean, you, you know, you're wrong. And then I go and smoke my cigar, you know, drink my coffee or whatever. Um, you got to not let them affect you. Because from here on until we're dead, we are going to be pelted with stories about, you know, stories that are designed to validate the lies. Oh, what was it? Did Matt Walsh have a video? Matt, that's it's a perfect example. Perfect example. Uh, more men are poor, they're not making as much money, you know, wages have stagnated, things like that. And men are not proposing as much because they're not <clears throat> economically capable or ready in a financial position to do so. And the media managed to make it like, and those who suffer the most are women because men aren't proposing as much. It's like, uh, how about the men being poor? Is that... You know, maybe we should talk about that. The problem is men's poverty. Maybe we should ask some questions and say, well, how can we change that and not just give them more money? Like, is there something structural with today's society in the labor market or our training education system that maybe there's a reason we should fix that? <clears throat> no, it's, and the women suffer because their men are proposing as much. <laughs> Hillary Clinton, women suffer the most when men die in war. Like, what? Excuse me? <laughs> oh, I know you, you're a widow now, but is it the, the husband who died, maybe? The one who really suffered more? <laughs> and you're going to see articles like that until you're dead. And they're going to turn up the volume and, uh, and it's just the lying industry to protect their fifis so that these people keep forking over their money. The big educate, passion, follow your heart, money will follow what, and, and people are still gonna sign up to it. You're educated, the prestige, your status. I have a master's degree in, okay lady, you got your master's degree. And what did you pay for it? Good. D did you pay me my tuition? There, thank you. Oh yeah, here's your master's degree. Oh yeah, you're smart, you're educated, you're prestigious, you have status. Now go buy your wine. Um, they're gonna keep, cause that's where the money is. That's where the money is. The money is in lies. It is not to... Look, let me show you something. Um, this book here. That fell down. You know what? I don't need this book anymore. I'm going to put that over here. This book uh, is mine, yes, obviously. But this is 100% truth, 100% accuracy, 100% based in the real world. If you buy this book and read it, although not all the way through, it's to be a reference book. Like you only go to the point of the book where you're like, oh, I'm, I'm I don't know, 
I guess you'd be 35 at this. You'd read this part of the book. You wouldn't read it when you're 75. You do well. All right? You do very well. <clears throat> but you're not going to feel good. You're like, oh, gosh, how much do I have to save? How much do I have? What do I have to forfeit? Uh, but if you go in your lady and you want to read Matt Hussey's books or Derek Jackson's books, <laughs> they outsell mine. Oh, easily by thousands to one. Easy, easy. Because they tell them what they want to hear. And so that's the lesson. You're not going to change them. People want to be lied to all the time. And that's the biggest damn industry out there. Well, the sex market is the biggest damn industry out there. The second closest, which is very closely tied to the sex industry because women want to be lied to, like, will you have sex with us? Okay, we have, lies, 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 lies. Uh, so they are kind of combined. Uh, and if you want to make your money, because unfortunately men really can't enter the sexual value market, we can't just like, hey, here's my titties, thousands of dollars showered to us on the internet. Your counter, the way men can make money, and women too, look at Oprah, hello. Lie. Play on. Big dick play on. Swing down by your knees. Money, lots of money. Great movie. So don't let their lies piss you off. Capitalize on their lies. All right, that's it. Links to all my amazing shit down below. You got questions, you need guidance, sit a doo bada bada bing, assholeconsulting.com. You want lies, go listen to mainstream media. And then get some of the books. They're also in the links down below. We'll see you guys later. Toodles.